Netflix. It's your go-to source for bingeable shows, and with more and more content being released every day, it always has something to watch no matter what kind of mood you're in. Plus, Netflix's original series offer options viewers can't find anywhere else. Many of those options create serious buzz. From comedy, drama, action, horror, and more, Netflix originals have entered the cultural conversation and become an important part of the pop culture we love today. With so many original series hitting the streamer on a regular basis, it's not surprising that there have been certain shows that sparked controversy. Controversy that sometimes has revolved around the content of the show itself, sometimes it's been the product of behind the scenes drama, and sometimes it's the result of questionable decisions either by the show's producers or by Netflix itself. No matter how they began, these controversies kicked off major conversations around the place of TV in an era where anyone can, and often does, voice their opinion. Who starts? In this video, we'll take a look at 10 controversies sparked by Netflix's original series. We'll count them down from ones that sparked some deep cultural soul-searching to those who ultimately became silly because of the controversy itself and how it was handled. Now come on, let's go on an adventure! Coming in at number 10 is The Patriot Act with Hassan Minaj. Netflix doesn't have the best track record in the talk show department, but this series, which premiered in 2018 and comments on the news of the day with humor and satire, looks like it's working. One episode in particular started a raw debate over the responsibilities of American companies like Netflix that bring content to an international audience. Within the episode in question, Minaj was critical of the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. When the Saudi government learned about the episode, Netflix was asked to remove it from the platform in their country, claiming it violated Saudi cybercrime laws. While Netflix claimed it was simply following a valid legal request and still supported artistic freedom, many questioned the company's reasoning. Saudi Arabia has a history of using its broadly worded cybercrime law to censor and imprison anyone who challenges the government. By agreeing to pull the episode, Netflix was seen as facilitating the country's crackdown on free expression and its continued censorship of information. It was a necessary reckoning over whether a company should prioritize local laws over freedom of expression. If you want to see the episode that started all this, it's still available on Netflix everywhere. Except for Saudi Arabia. Or as it's known in Saudi Arabia, Air 404, not Saudi. <laughs> Coming in at number 9 is Atypical, a dramedy that focused on the trials and tribulations of Sam, a high school student on the autism spectrum and his family. Netflix has already released two seasons of the series and it's been renewed for a third. But when the show first came out in 2017, many in the autism community were less than thrilled. Almost everyone would agree that more representation and inclusion on TV is a good thing. But when the show's claim to fame is its representation of a condition that we don't often see depicted on TV, like autism, the show's creators have a responsibility to get it right. When Atypical first premiered in 2017, though, many felt the depiction was inaccurate and stereotypical. Not only was Sam portrayed as someone who lacked feelings and couldn't form relationships, his condition was turned into a joke and was blamed on for all of his family's problems. Most importantly, the series was blasted for including almost no one on the autism spectrum in the cast or crew. Fortunately, the show learned from its mistakes and brought in a consultant with autism spectrum disorder, which led to significant improvements in the second season. Our eighth controversy stems from the seemingly uncontroversial royal drama, The Crown. The show follows Queen Elizabeth II as she ascends to the throne and serves her country. Her family life is also a central feature of the series, especially her marriage to Prince Philip. I want to be married to my wife. Controversy erupted when it was discovered that Claire Foy, who portrayed the Queen, was paid less than her co-star Matt Smith, who portrayed Philip. When the show originally premiered, Foy was relatively unknown, but Smith had recently portrayed Doctor Who's 11th Doctor. Smith's star status led him to earn more. Given the series revolved around Foy's character though, the wage gap rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. The producers of the show eventually issued an apology to the actors for putting them in the center of this dispute. They also promised that as the show moved forward and cast new actors to play the Queen and Prince Philip as they aged, no one would be paid more than the actor playing the Queen. The controversy became another example of the pay gap between men and women in Hollywood and everywhere else. At number 7 is House of Cards, Netflix's first original series. From the start, Kevin Spacey, who played the political shark Frank Underwood, was the face of the series. That all changed when allegations of assault surfaced against the actor. In quick succession, Netflix announced that the show's sixth season, which was in the process of being filmed, would be its last, that production had been suspended indefinitely, and finally, that it cut ties with Spacey. While it seemed impossible for the House of Cards to continue without Spacey, continue it did. The sixth season was rewritten and reshot to focus on Frank Underwood's wife, Claire, making the actor who played her, Robin Wright, the new face of the show. 
When the first trailers were released, they emphasized Frank's demise and Claire's political ascension to make sure viewers understand they could watch the series' final season without encountering Spacey. One of the things that Netflix has become known for is picking up shows that were canceled by their original networks. It's a practice that fans love. When all hope seems lost, Netflix swoops in to keep the shows they love going. Coming in at number six is one of the first and most well-known examples, Arrested Development. Arrested Development had a hard time maintaining its ratings it needed on Fox and was canceled after just three seasons. In that time though, it built a passionate cult following. So when Netflix announced it was bringing the comedy back for a fourth season, fans were ecstatic. Unfortunately, the new batch of episodes weren't especially well received, so they tried again with the fifth season. But soon after production wrapped, accusations of misconduct against Jeffrey Tambor came out. The allegations came from an incident on his critically acclaimed Amazon Prime series, Transparent. Tambor left Transparent, but continued to be a part of Arrested Development. In an effort to minimize the controversy and take the heat off of the show, the cast did an interview with the New York Times. Things didn't go as planned. The cast discussed an incident where Tambor blew up against his co-star and on-screen wife, Jessica Walter. As Walter cried, the other male members of the cast defended Tambor's behavior. In the uproar that erupted afterwards, Netflix canceled the cast's promotional events in the UK, and the release of the fifth season of the formerly adored show barely made a blip on the pop culture radar. At this point, it's doubtful we'll get a sixth season out of the series. Rounding out our tour of Netflix controversy stemming from men behaving badly is The Ranch at number five. The Ranch marked the reunion of that 70s show's alums Danny Masterson and Ashton Kutcher, but when Masterson was accused of assault and fan outcry followed, Netflix severed ties with him as they had with Spacey. Unlike they did with Spacey, however, Netflix decided against reshooting the episodes that Masterson had already appeared in. Instead, they opted to release the episodes and have the show continue without him afterwards. The decision is a head-scratcher in the wake of Netflix's other actions in response to similar accusations. The Ranch isn't nearly as high-profile as House of Cards, so perhaps it was a business decision. But either way, it didn't come across so well in the hashtag MeToo era. At number four is 13 Reasons Why. When it comes to controversial Netflix shows, this one is the gold standard, and it's really no wonder. The teen-targeted show tells the story of the events that led to Hannah Baker to take her own life. After she's gone, Hannah has a set of cassette tapes circulated in which she explains her reasons for her actions. Parents and other critics accuse the show of many things, among them graphically depicting Hannah's last moments and using a narrative that downplayed mental illness while making it seem like others were to blame when someone takes their own life. The show was also very popular, so Netflix renewed it for a second season. As a way to stem any further controversy, Netflix commissioned a study with Northwestern University on the ways the show impacted its viewers. The research found that teen response to the show was fairly positive, but parents wanted more guidance on how to support their children as they watched it. So Netflix decided to produce an after show to discuss 13 Reasons Why's challenging topics. Despite all this, season two didn't make nearly the splash that season one did, and it quickly faded from the cultural conversation. Nonetheless, Netflix has renewed 13 Reasons Why for a season three. Coming in at number three is Iron Fist. The funny thing about this controversy surrounding the show was that it started out as a worthwhile conversation about representation and diversity. Iron Fist was one of the four shows Marvel initially agreed to make for Netflix. Because of the popularity of the movies, the shows were highly anticipated, and every decision that was made about them got a lot of attention. So when Finn Jones was cast as the lead character Danny Rand, the backlash was swift. Yes, yes, Danny Rand was white in the comics, but since it's been a long time since Iron Fist was first introduced and the character is a master of martial arts, many thought it would be a perfect opportunity to cast an Asian actor in a starring role. It was an opportunity that the show didn't take. To make matters worse, Jones took to Twitter to defend his casting and only ended up angering fans more. In the end, the show was critically panned, leaving fans cold and the conversation was dropped. After a slightly improved season two, the series was canceled. It won't be missed. At number two is the controversy that surrounded the comedy Dear White People when Netflix first announced it would soon hit the streamer. A continuation of the movie of the same name, the show centers on the lives of several black students in a predominantly white university. When the announcement of the release date for the upcoming series hit the interwebs in 2017, people who consider themselves members of the alt-right freaked out. The 30-second trailer captured the incisive social commentary and frank examination of racial issues viewers could expect from the show. But critics saw something else. Racism against white people. These critics accused the show of having an anti-white agenda and promoting white genocide. 
overlooking the opportunity it provided to consider an important social issue. Ultimately, the Fuhrer was much ado about nothing, and actually brought more publicity and interest to the show than it might have received otherwise. Finally, at number one is Insatiable, a teen comedy that wasn't just controversial, it was also just plain bad. The uproar started when the first trailer for the series was released. It quickly established the premise for the series. An overweight girl, Patty, is mercilessly bullied until she has to get her jaw wired shut over the summer and comes back to high school thin and hot. Now that she's conventionally attractive, Patty's popular, and she decides to take revenge on her former tormentors. And this doesn't sound crazy to you? While producers insisted the show was body positive, most people couldn't understand how. The show is accused of body shaming and perpetrating the notion that in order to be popular and successful, a woman has to be thin. Critics even started a Change.org petition that almost 250,000 people signed. Things didn't get any better when the show came out. With even more outlandish and offensive storylines than the trailer captured, the show was panned by critics and rejected by viewers. Then Netflix did the one thing no one seemed to want, renew the series for a second season. It'll be hitting the streamer in 2019, and if history has any indication, many subscribers will do anything in their power to avoid it. That's it for our countdown of controversial Netflix shows from deep to unnecessary. While Netflix originals have brought us hours of enjoyment, it sometimes sparked outrage and indignation. Given all the content the streamer puts out, it's bound to rack up more examples, but hopefully it'll also learn from its past mistakes. Thanks for watching, and happy streaming!